Welcome back, my pupils. This is Gene coming to you with Reloading from the Hot Pod. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two of the most popular concealed carry pistols on the market. That is the Sig Sauer P365 XL and the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield Plus. First, we're going to take a look inside the Sig Sauer box to see what you get with the P365 XL or any of the variants from Sig Sauer. You get a nice hard plastic case with lockable potential, excellent system in it. Then you get the pistol and you get two magazines, a 15 round and a 12 round with the P365 XL. Other models will vary on the magazines that do come with them. Uh, what else comes in the box is just some paperwork, a chamber flag, and that's it. Inside the M&P cardboard box, MP gives you a cardboard box unless you buy a performance center model. Then you might get a plastic box just depending on the addition of it. But inside the box comes with the pistol, some paperwork, a lock, two magazines, one being a 13 round magazine, another one being a 10 round magazine, and of course the pistol. Now this P365XL is my personal daily carry. The M&P Nine Shield Plus is Mrs. Hotshot's daily carry, and we've both chosen each firearm to suit our personal preferences. Before we do any comparison of these, let me show clear, nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber, on the Sig Sauer P365 XL, and the Shield Plus, nothing in the magazine, and nothing in the chamber. We'll go with the 365 XL first. Now this is my personal EDC, so I have added Talon grip tape to it, the pro version of it. I really like a lot of texture on my grips. And I also added an ADE Advanced Optics Spike Red Dot Sight. It is an always on and does adjust to the brightness and outer illumination of light to on how bright it is. So I really, really love that ADE Spike. ADE spike red dot sight. The rest of the pistol fits me very well, even without the extended magazine base pad. Now for this comparison, I did put the, the flush fit magazine base pads on both pistols just to show comparison. The magazine release is very easy to get to. It just takes a slight modification of my grip to get to it. Slide serrations front and back are very usable. The trigger on it is wonderful. Nice positive reset, very crisp on its uptake. Now for the Shield Plus with a flush fit magazine, the grip on it, I can only get two fingers on the grip. Uh, my pinky is just barely holding on there and slips off under fire. So when I do shoot this, I automatically curve my pinky under the magazine. The magazine release is easy to get to and does eject very nicely. The trigger on it is a very nice flat face trigger. It's Sig Sauer's new trigger. Nice crisp take up. Not so much of a tactile break or re reset on it, but it is nice. And it is kind of, it is very pleasant to shoot, especially for me only being able to get two fingers on it. I would prefer all three fingers on the grip as I do my XL, but it kind of is what it is when you're dealing with the uh, micro compact market. Front slide serrations um, are not usable. They're just aesthetics. Those are just for aesthetics. Those are not usable at all. The rear cocking serrations are very nice. She has chosen not to put a red dot on her carry pistol, where I do choose a red dot, but that is just by choice. Both firearms come with factory night sights. Now, because I put the dot on here, I've replaced the rear night sight with the dots that actually come on the ADE Spike Optic, but it does have uh, the X-ray sights on the front and then the night sights on the Smith & Wesson front and rear. In size comparison between these two, if you lay them side by side, I can't put them on their slides, but if you lay them side by side, line up the slides, the grips are about the same size, but the undercut on the Sig Sauer 
is much higher as you can see here which allows me to get all four fingers on this grip with a flush fit magazine. The thickness of it is about like this. Get my arm around here. You can see the thickness. The Sig Sauer is wider, but I also do have the Talon grip tape on it, which does add in some of the thickness. But me having extra large hands, that little bit of thickness really does help me control and mitigate the recoil of this firearm. The bore axis on the firearm seems to be just about the same. They're both excellent, excellent guns, excellent shooters, and have proven track records now. Excellent proven track records. When I first seen this P365 XL, I literally, I fell in love with it. I held it, I put it up, I went back the next day, and I purchased it. She did the same thing with this. You know, she, she held this, went back, thought about it, and purchased it. She really loved the, the aggressive uh, MMP 2.0 grip texture on it, which is why she has not added any talon grips to it. And she does shoot this very well. We did talk about the mag release a little bit, but what about the slide release lock? Slide release lock is pretty easy to get to on this. It is, it is hard. I mean, I'm not a weak man, and I, I really can't release that. I have to release the slide to let it go home. So if it goes back to full lock, I am going to have to send the slide home to recharge it. The P365 XL, locked into place, has a very large shelf there for the size of the gun. And I can release it with some effort. Now, I have probably... 12 to 1500 rounds through my carry gun. I do take it out and I shoot a box through it and then I put my self-defense back in it because I want to be familiar with it. So I don't run a lot of rounds through this gun, but I do run a lot of rounds through guns. Trust me on that one. But I do trust this very much and I do handle it very well. When I first got my concealed carry, I've had it about seven years now. When I first got my concealed carry, my choice was an MMP shield because it was if it's slim, easily concealable, and being a new a new shooter or well a new everyday carry person, not just a shooter but an everyday carry person, I wanted something that I could easily conceal and not worry about. So I did my reviews, I did my homework, and I bought an MMP 9 shield, the original version. Either of these are an excellent choice for a concealed carry firearm. Both are slim, both have nice capacity. The stock magazines, 12 and 10 for flush mount, which I do like, well, it's plus one, so 13 and 11. I do like having two extra rounds on me, just because you if just you never get into any type of a situation, and Lord knows I do not want that, but we do have the right to protect ourselves, so I do choose to carry, and so does she. The one really huge question I have is the magazines are about the same height on the back. Try to get them lined up decently. Same height on the back. They're about the same length. How does Sig Sauer manage to get two extra rounds into their magazine over Smith & Wesson? You know, when Sig Sauer developed this, they actually made the magazine first and then designed the gun around it which I think was a good idea. The Smith & Wesson Shield, nothing wrong with at all. Uh, no complaints with it, but they did take an existing design and have to design a magazine to fit into it to hold extra rounds. So in closing on this, I really like both firearms. I shoot both very well. My personal preference to carry is the Sig Sauer. Her personal preference to carry is the Smith & Wesson M&P. Um, so, both are great guns to have. Both come with night sights, both come optics ready, both come with decent capacity in the magazines now. You now you got a, a 12 and a 15 here with the SIG, and with this one you get a 10, always got a look, and a 13. <laughs> but they're both excellent carry options. So, leave in the comments below, what do you carry? What have you carried that you quit carrying? What, what 
don't you have that you would like to have to carry for your everyday carry? That's a lot of carries. And as always, my pupils, I greatly appreciate you watching my videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my affiliate links below. And always, always remember to keep blowing the smoke. Shoo.